Good morning, everyone. Mr. Lewis here with Walter coming to you with a discussion about folk culture today. So we've been talking about both pop and folk culture. And yesterday in section 3.3, we really dove a little deeper into the aspects and elements of folk culture. And we're going to continue with that today by looking at the country of Mauritania and their food customs there. So without further ado, let's take a look. Okay, so continuing with section 3.3, Elements of Folk Culture, what I'm really going to be asking you to do today is to watch a very short clip on Mauritanian food culture and then answer 10 questions in buzz, all multiple choice, to go with that clip and to answer some, some questions about folk culture. But before we can do that, I think it's really important to get a little bit of background knowledge on the country of Mauritania. So where is it? It's located in Africa. It's in, in northwestern Africa. It is smack dab in the middle of the Sahara Desert. There is actually a little bit of the country that does border the Atlantic Ocean over here on the west coast of Africa, but most of it is dominated by that Saharan climate. So it's very dry. It's very hot. It's very windy. There's not a lot of arable land. It is a very arid, hot climate. As far as the population goes, there's about four and a half million people, but it is quickly growing. It's a developing country, uh, stage two, classic stage two country. So they're in early, early development stages here. And it's not a particularly wealthy country. They struggle with things like poverty and, and hunger. And uh, they have their struggles as any stage two country would. But they're developing quickly and growing quickly. As far as the culture goes, it is essentially 100% Muslim. And even though there are pockets of people uh, who ce celebrate other faiths and practice other religions, the country is officially named the Islamic Republic of Mauritania. So it is the official religion of the country. Whereas in the United States, we do not have an official religion. We have separation of church and state. The official state religion in Mauritania is Islam. And because of that, the official law in Mauritania is Sharia law. So Mauritania's culture is largely dominated by Islamic culture. However, there's also this very unique blend of diffusion with the indigenous folk who, who have been in Mauritania for a long, long, long time. We're talking thousands of years. The Berbers, pre-Arab indigenous people in Mauritania. And then we get a couple other groups. The Moors, who were the earliest Muslim settlers in the area and obviously had a huge influence, but also the French, who eventually colonized Mauritania as well as other parts of North Africa and uh, left a lot of their culture there once they left, right? So going into some other material aspects of folk culture in Mauritania, the clothing is largely influenced by uh, religion and climate. As we talked about in Islam, uh, it is common for women to have very loose-fitting clothing covering the whole body, covering the head, as you can see in this photo, and oftentimes covering the face. We don't see that here with Mauritanian women, but uh, it wouldn't be surprising in, in a country that is 99.9% .9 Muslim to see that, right? We, we've learned that that is a traditional dress in, in a lot of those cultures. However, there are also elements of, of early Berber culture, and you can see some of the styles in the gowns that these women are wearing are, are very unique, right? And, and sort of hark back to um, some of that unique local culture. So we get a lot of cool, interesting mix there of, of uh, religion, climate, and that, that uh, early indigenous culture of Mauritania. As far as housing goes, it is very much influenced by the local environment. When you're in the Sahara Desert or any desert, where you live is going to be largely uh, determined and how you live and how you build your homes is going to be largely determined and influenced by that climate. Finally, recreation, this should come as no surprise, football or soccer is the favorite sport of Mauritania. And it, it uh, makes a lot more sense even um, when you think about France colonizing the area for such a long time and, and probably bringing that sport with them. And, and um, you know, spreading the popularity of it. And so once they left, once, once the, the French granted independence to Mauritania in 1960, it was just a couple years after that that we get the creation of the Mauritanian 
uh, national football squad or soccer squad. Our focus today, though, is on a different aspect of culture, and it's very much about cultural relativism and perspective. It gets into a couple things, uh, one of which we've talked about, one of which we really haven't, food and beauty. So first of all, in Mauritania, as we said, there's not a lot of room for agriculture, right? So, so hunger is a huge issue. And whereas in developed countries, popular culture and media have sort of created one definition of beauty, in Mauritania, beauty is really a product of the local environment and that food scarcity that I just mentioned. Being physically larger in Mauritania suggests a few things. One, you have access to food. In a country where a lot of people are starving, you have easy access to food. Your family must have some money, right, to get all of that food, which means you probably have a pretty high social status and you are likely to be a pretty good choice of spouse if you have all of those things, that family wealth, that social status. So interestingly enough, whereas in some parts of the world, people are starving themselves on a diet um, to look what, what you know, culture and society has told them is quote unquote better, in Mauritania, we actually see young women being force-fed to the point that they're vomiting. And, and they have to go to these camps, essentially, and this is what our video gets into, where they just eat and eat and eat and try to put on as much weight as possible so that when they get to the right age, they can attract a spouse. So this video is about force feeding in Mauritania. And a lot of women do this voluntarily. A lot of them, not so much. And, and you're gonna see a couple scenes where there is some vomiting. Um, it's mostly camel's milk, which I know sounds pretty gross, but it's as if somebody were vomiting water. So it might be a, a little less sickening than maybe other instances of vomiting. But I'm just warning you, so that you can turn away when that scene does come or you can skip through and hit the you know 15 second skip button so you don't have to look at any of that. Um, hopefully that uh, doesn't uh, disturb you too much. But I did want to just warn you that uh, there's going to be a little vomiting. People are literally uh, feeding these women or the women are feeding themselves un un until the point where they just can't hold it all in. So one of the journalists in this video actually goes to one of these camps to physically experience what these women are going through to look like their culture wants them to look. So it's a, a very unique example of folk culture and cultural relativism in the aspects of food and what is considered beauty. So when you click this uh, video, it's gonna play automatically from about, what was it, I think seven minutes and some odd seconds. You, you, that's where you need to start it. Or excuse me, nine minutes and, and I think it was 9.41 I asked you to start. So start there and you only need to watch up until, it says it in the buzz agenda, but you only need to watch up until about, let's see here, uh, 17, yeah, 17.25 roughly, something like that. So. If you just start playing it on this slide, it will actually stop when you get to uh, the point where I want you to stop. So we'll let it run here and see see what happens. I think it will automatically stop itself. So this is the end. You can see him drinking some of the, the camel's milk. All right, so yeah, it actually doesn't stop, but you do not need to watch this final story. You only need to watch the middle story here that starts at about 941. All right, so start it there. It's only about eight minutes long. Watch the whole thing. And then once you're done with that, go ahead to the next slide and you can see that we're asking you to answer 10 questions on Buzz today. It's just titled Force Feeding in Mauritania. That's what the activity is titled in Buzz. The first five questions are directly from the video. So you can open this while you're watching the video. The next five questions are based more on critical thinking skills 
and are more similar to questions that you might see on the Unit 3 test, for example. You have unlimited attempts, it's worth 10 points, and only your highest score will be kept. So, with all that said, we'll continue this tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone.